Pooh and Custis here very hard. Uh, yeah, sum it up for me. It was a, bit uh, of a, it was a great fight, yeah. It was, I mean, look, Errol Spence was excellent. Uh, I thought Kel was controlling the, the fight through six rounds. Broke his orbital bone, the other one, in the seventh round. And then the fight turned. And, uh, you know, maybe a mixture of that, maybe a mixture of the weight, maybe a mixture of Errol Spence just being very, very good led to uh, him getting a stoppage eventually. The eye was a concern. He went back, he large. sat back to the, on the store at the seventh round and I said to my old man, he's done his other eye, can't believe it. I, I could see it, was, it looked exactly the same as the other eye in the Golovkin fight. Mm. So, um, but listen, you can't take anything away from Spence. He was, he was outstanding. I fancied after six rounds, Kel was going to and, go and stop him. Mm. Um, but Spence kept coming, he worked the body brilliantly. Uh, very tough as well, rough. A uh, very good fighter. Can you just your take on the ending of that fight, obviously, mm. Brooke? Well, it's easy for people to say, oh, yeah. you know, when you can't see and, and you've got double vision, it ain't a great place to be. And, and, you know, he remembers the comments from the doctor around the Golovkin fight, which is you can go blind, you know. So it's all very well saying, oh, he should have carried on, he's gone out on his shield. He did go out his shield. He could have quit in the, was it the, eighth, uh, the ninth or tenth round when he went down. Mm. But he didn't, he wanted to carry on, but it was, you know, it was, where'd you draw the line? You know, when you lose your sight. So, you know, he's walking around the ring, he can't see, he's got double vision, it's over, the fight's over. And, uh, you know, like I said, you, the weight, the injury, it's all irrelevant. Errol Spence was, was excellent and the worthy winner. No, um, there was no clause in there. No, it's I mean, a mandatory, it's mandatory. mandatory. No, it's, listen, yeah. it's time for Kelt to move up yeah. to 154, you know. He made the weight, no excuses, he made it well. Obviously, it was a struggle, but you know, just as much as a struggle as before. But he's, you know, he's in his 30s now, and he's made that weight for a long time. And I feel like, as I felt like before the Earl Spence fight, he'd be, a, he'd be a real great fighter at 154 pounds. You know, but now he's got to have another operation. This is boxing. It's a brutal game. So you know, get that done next week, and then hopefully get one in before the end of the year and try and set up a big world title fight in 2018. Just a quick word on um, George Groves, phenomenal fight, in, uh, war, WBA yeah. super super middleweight champion. Great fight, great fight. Yeah, yeah. I'm really pleased for George. You know, uh, there were times in that fight where I was thinking this could get this could come on top for George, and he stuck it on Chudnov and he didn't stop. And I'll tell you what, that shouldn't have his one brave geezer. Um, because he was stopped on his feet and he would have got all night. He was going to get badly hurt in that fight. It was a great stoppage from Steve Gray in that fight. And, and chuffed for George to become world champion. And also pleased for him for the reception he got tonight. I mean, it was almost like he was headlining, you know, that, that kind of noise, wasn't it? So really pleased for him to get a world title. And now he's got some big options. Is it pushing the gal fight? Surely it pushes it closer. Yeah, I think. Have you spoke to George? Yeah. Did he break his jaw? He didn't say. No, someone's thought he might break his jaw, but yeah, look, the Digal fight's a big fight. Um, you know, you've got Callum Smith fighting Durrell. Yeah. You know, you've got all kinds of big fights at Super Middleweight, but I think for now he's going to go home and just sort of sit back and take a big breath and say, finally. Mm. And well done, Dave Allen as well. Disappointed. Mm. Very disappointed. You know, um, you give him the opportunity, and I'm not, you know, I don't mean to sound like an arsehole, but I'm just being honest with you, and he fucked it up. You know, he was poor, he didn't put punches together, combinations together, he didn't really look fit. He was in town today, going to meet people in the pubs on social media. You don't do that if you want to be a champion. You know what I mean? It's all, it's funny, and it, the, re, the reception he got was amazing, but if you want to be taken seriously, you've got to be professional and you've got to behave like a champion if you want to be a champion. But he hasn't, he doesn't know how to behave. He hasn't, you know, he hasn't, the people who got around him have got to get hold of him and say, you can't do that, you do that. And he says, I don't want to sit in my room because I'll go mad in the room, I want to get out with people. You're burning energy doing that. You're walking all around town, you're having photos of people getting pulled around. He had a chance to win a Commonwealth title tonight, and he blew it. And it was there for him on a plate. Lemuel Thomas boxed well, in my opinion, deserved the win. Carl Froch had uh, Dave Allen up by five rounds. I didn't, I had Lemuel Thomas win. Dave Allen didn't do anything. He, he leaned on him, he hit him with a one shot, Lemoy Thomas was cons you know, consistently boxing him, boxing him, you know, and I, I, I gave him a rucking, though, because, you know, he's got such a golden opportunity, but it's not just the case of he's not trying, he is trying. Sometimes he's not good enough. He's got a lot to learn. He's not a quality heavyweight yet. He's a nice bloke who can fight a bit, but tonight he could have won the Commonwealth title. You know what? I'm glad 
all things considered, and with the fight, I'm glad he didn't get the decision. Because he didn't deserve it, and ultimately, he won't learn. Mm. If he had got a decision, he won't learn. I said to him and Michael Marsden, you will have a date next week from me. I ain't going nowhere. But you've got to act like a pro, be like a pro. And I, and I re reiterate, it's not that he's not trying. It's just that he's got to change. So get another chance with me, he'll come again. But it's up to him now. I can't, you know, I, I haven't got time to go and live in Doncaster and hold his hand to go to the gym and, and go to a healthy eating place and, and learn about nutrition and live right and sleep right. He's got to do it on his own. He's the only one who can help him and the people around him. Elian, thank you very much. Cheers.